Ireland reveals an ambitious plan to become the best place to be LGBTQ plus in Europe. LGBT Ireland has introduced their goal, which will run between 2023 and 2027, focusing on research, LGBTQ plus awareness training, and combat combating anti-trans views in the country. It will also aim to offer more help to LGBTQ plus refugees and asylum seekers and advocate for certain legislative reforms in Ireland. Ireland might face some competition in achieving its goal with the Welsh government has set itself the same target back in 2021. Commenting on the plan, Paula Fagan, the chief executive of LGBT Ireland said, quote, the past five years have focused on building a sustainable organization, expanding the services we provide and developing our training and advocacy capacity. The ambitious plan we have launched builds on our achievements, harnessing what we have learned from our incredible member organizations and strategic partners, and sets us up for the next phase in our evolution." End quote. LGBTQ plus organizations in Ireland have welcomed the new strategy. Adam Long, the, the board director of Ireland's National LGBT Federation, told Pink News, quote, we fully share the ambition of our friends at LGBT Ireland having been the first in the world to overwhelmingly affirm marriage equality by popular vote and pass progressive gender recognition reform the same year, we now need to see further progress concerning the likes of effective hate crime laws, a full ban on so-called conversion therapy, and proactive LGBTQ plus inclusion in all of our schools, among other key priorities, end quote. A spokesperson for Shout Out, steering committee, an organization delivering educational workshops to help people become better LGBTQ plus allies said, quote, it's great to see that Irish LGBTQ plus organizations are aiming to make Ireland the friendliest LGBTQ plus nation in Europe, end quote. You know, this is pretty amazing given Ireland's uh, history of being a Catholic uh, uh, oriented nation. The fact that they have made such tremendous progress in uh, the LGBTQ movement is just amazing. I think they, uh, you know, in 2015, they voted for uh, same sex marriages. Uh, it just seems like they're leaning away in Europe. Um, and it's such um, uh, different than what we're seeing, obviously, in the United States with challenges to our community, uh, you know, whether it's the Supreme Court, whether it's our governor here down in Florida, DeSantis. Um, so it's amazing to see that globally, despite what we're seeing in the United States, that there's still global efforts to continue to fight for LGBTQ community. So it's amazing. Absolutely. This is sort of like the dream of task force, isn't yes. it? It really is. Uh, how nice it must be to have, to be able to live in a country where uh, your government is affirming your right to exist and, <laughs> you know, wants to proudly boast about it to attract people to come to it. Um, I think on the national level, we have some strong advocates uh, in our government, you know, in, on the White House and in the Senate um, and in the House for that matter. But, um, you know, we're obviously facing a lot of challenges. We have a very diverse country with very different ideologies. Yeah. Um, so it's super important right now that organizations like Task Force, GLAAD, HRC are all working to make sure that we're holding our, our public leaders uh, both civic and and community based uh, their their feet to the fire to make sure that we aren't going to cede any ground on LGBTQ civil rights. We are going to defend the progress that we've made, and we're going to continue to make advancements because we have a right to exist. We're going to be unapologetic. We are going to be uncompromising. We're here. We're queer. Yes, we are. The DJ in me just wants to know what the parties are like are out there. <laughs> oh, they're amazing. Oh, I'm sure they're. I have never been. I'm dying to go. <laughs> yeah, Dublin yeah. is I need a travel partner. If straight <laughs> Irish people are fun, imagine the gays. <gasps> Wow. Even the straights didn't even are think somewhat of that. fun. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and Irish I need is, to contact somebody out there and get like a gig just to be like, I'll just come out and play. You just put me up in a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> they are a fun country. It's a beautiful country. There is, believe me, Dublin is great. Uh, there is so much more outside. Uh, right. too. I mean, it, 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 it is an Irish spring commercial. I mean, it really is yeah. that. I love it. That's the I've reason I want to go. I've heard nothing but good things about tourism, like going to Ireland. My sister was recently there um, and she loved it. 
um, and she said there was a lot of queer visibility. She's not queer, but she's okay. yeah. she attracts queers everywhere she goes. <laughs> and she's like, oh my god, I've never seen so many queer people. But also, <laughs> Ireland is a Catholic country and can be very conservative. But because of its like, I believe it's anti-imperialist history uh, with Britain and stuff, they also have quite a liberal and progressive culture. Ah. As a Palestinian, I know that a lot of the people who you know, um, side with Palestine or happen to know a lot about it happen to be um, Irish in my life. You know, they've always, you know, been a little, you know, one step ahead of uh, other people. And I just think it's because they, they, ha they have a history of resistance and anti-imperialism. So in a way, it's also a very liberal place. Well, Ireland is less than the population of South Florida. They're about yeah. 5.3 million people. And they're probably about the same size if you looked at, at, the, at, at okay. a map. But they were undergoing sectarian violence yeah. like 30 years ago. This is right. not something that was even 100 years ago when the real, yeah. real when it was really terrible. Yeah, but yeah, of course. 30 yeah. years ago, there were still bombings in Northern Ireland. Yeah. Uh, sure. There was still um, a huge, and we were afraid Brexit was going to repeal Ignite, all this progress yeah. because of, <laughs> it closed some borders, but I think they worked it out. But if they were able to overcome sectarian violence, and the terrible history that they had uh, as recently as I said, the 1990s, yeah. then it gives us hope that we can overcome some of those divides 100%. in America. 100%. You know, you just have to look at the blueprint that they laid out. If I could add one more thing, because yeah. you know, the Catholic Church was mentioned twice, um, the times are changing. I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that um, one of the founders of the National LGBTQ Task Force was a Catholic priest who was a Jesuit who stayed uh, in, in service to the church his entire life while um, also being on one of the founders and on the board of the task force. But also the Catholic Church recently launched a new group here called Outreach, which specifically advocates on behalf of LGBTQ people and try, is trying to reform the church to become more welcoming to the LGBTQ community. Yeah. So I think that's in large part due to the credit of LGBT um, advocates. Uh, one of the task force's primary areas of work is faith, faith work, um, because we don't want to cede that ground to the people who would like to use, uh, who would like to misconstrue, misconstrue right. doctrine of faith, differing faith communities mm -hmm. to uh, to oppress us. Um, and so, you know, those the, that progress, I think, both in Ireland and throughout the world. Uh, is really positive and we need to celebrate that. Yeah, and I, I would like to add too that, you know, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. We're just increasing in numbers, yeah. right? Yeah. And so it's yeah. actually smart strategy on a part of the government, uh, Ireland and in this nonprofit organization to make that, like to put their stake in the ground, right? To say that this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna make Ireland the most LGBT friendliest place in all of Europe, right? It is great strategy. I mean, think about the tourism that will flock there because of their like what they're working on and how they're trying to make it a more open and welcoming place right and who like the lgbtq community has a lot of like discretionary income right we spend like crazy let's be real we we're just talking about the winter party where people transcend from Me? all around <laughs> yeah. all around right for the winter party and they spend yeah. i remember i'm from new york originally and i just lived down here a year and for years me and my friends would go, come from new york a whole pack of us like 20 of us from new york to celebrate the winter party or miami pride right and so i think it's smart policy smart strategy to focus on a community that's not going anywhere that's growing that's becoming more and more diverse and we're everywhere we're everywhere right like the more nations and countries put a stake in the ground the more we're showing up and popping up the more people are in excited about being gay right is the fact that they can see themselves all around the world so i'm excited about this and i think you're right like you know initiatives like this and what the task force is doing um it's just going to be encouraging for so many more people yeah one story before we move on that I want to share. I was in Dublin a few years ago, and I was with my dad, and we're walking through. Um, shockingly, we were passing a bar, but it had an LGBTQ flag, and not one of those like little stickers that you see in the corner. It was like it was like a, a decent sized little uh, flag poster in the corner, and I was like, Dad, come on, let's go on in, let's pop in for a pint. And so we did, and there were like uh, several um, couples, men and women, no same-sex couples, and I was like. And I was just like, I was like, oh, I mentioned it to the bartender and I was, and he was like, oh no, we're not a gay bar. Which what? I thought, which, which just hit me so yeah. hard because they have the flag in there. They're like gay welcoming, they're gay affirming. And that just summed up much yeah. of my experience at Double. They weren't a gay bar, but they put the flag out there that said, come on in. We welcome you. Have a pint. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. 
LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.